Hello everyone, this is Cypher Deck, and today we're going to be doing a little walkthrough of one of my favorite zones, Vishen's Peak. We are currently at the entrance, and where I am standing is most likely where you want to um, sit down at, um, if you want to pop a pet and flop on a necromancer so you can track the zone, and then also um, when you come on in you should be right on top of this gem here uh you'll notice that this uh worm will not see you from here even though it looks pretty scary uh they are um they are not going to attack you here unless somebody decides to run out kind of up to that lip there where it drops down and goes back up again let's go ahead and uh start walking through so there are two worms that path um in this area one of them can see invis. I mean, actually, both of them can see invis, but it really depends on the look of the draw. If it's something where you know you're going to be in here for a long time, you may want to go ahead and um, kill until you get a, um, a worm that is not um, uh, able to see invis. Uh, so there are two rankars uh, across these, these walls. If you are doing low health tra uh, pulling, you'll want to make sure that you bring your eye across over to these guys because with low health, uh, they are not going to be paying attention to the eye. They're going to use the eye to aggro you, but they will not be paying attention to the eye. We're going to come up here and this section here, whatever the zone spawns, uh, dragons will spawn at the respective uh, locations, but Hoshkar and Silverwing will path along here, and Silverwing will go all the way into Hoshkar's lair, and then same with Hoshkar. Hoshkar can go, I don't think, all the way up to Silverwing's, but they will go at least to the four rack. Uh, which I will explain what that is uh, here in a little bit. As we go into a room where a dragon spawns, I will be showing the information for that dragon up on the screen. This here is Hoshkar's lair. This is where they will spawn and then start moving almost immediately. This zone is one of the toughest zones in the game still. It is competitive to TOV, and um, a lot of times you got to choose whenever a uh, earthquake hits where you want to be. If you want to come here, a lot of times what people will do, if uh, at least back in the old days, is they would hit up uh, King Tormax. They would go and maybe get Statue and Avatar of War, and then they would come here and they would start clearing the zone. Uh, right here, I don't know what this is called, but this is where a monk will usually um, lay down, and this is where they'll joust, or they'll tag um, tag away any mobs that are heading down the ramp towards the raid force. So we're going to be heading on up here now, and we will see another worm. Again, all these worms have a chance to see invis, but... Uh, most likely they will not. Here we are coming up to four rack, of course, because there are four Rachnars uh, in this little section, which I always liked. Now, this is an area where you will get um, Hoshkar coming up to. I think they may only come into this room and then turn around, but I'm pretty sure I've seen Hoshkar move even further this way. So, Hoshkar and Silverwing are the only two dragons that I know that path because the other ones are going to stay on their pads in their respective areas. We're going to be coming up to, I believe, two rock now uh, before we go into the pillow rooms, and that is correct. So if you're a bard trying to run this, and these are all C and Viz mobs, what you'll want to do is you'll want to come around here you want to have sneak on, come in, and hold this little circle. Again, kind of hold tight because the aggro ranges aren't that huge. And, uh, or you may want to wait until he starts pathing back uh, before you move around him. To be honest, I really haven't done much here on a bard, but I believe that is correct. Now, 
this is where I am skewed a little bit. I believe Silverwing spawns on that pillow because up here is where Faradar is going to be, which I will show you that room last, as that is where I'm going to be clicking out. But I used to believe that Faradar spawned here, and Silverwing spawned at the other end, as they are the two most prominent dragons in the, in the zone. We're going to be now going up to the balcony. This is where three of the dragons are linked. Um, we are going to have, I'm pretty sure I'm going the right way. <laughs> um they we are going to have nexona in the very first room we're going to have um drushk in the second room and i always say it incorrectly but i believe it's zygaz uh is going to be in the third room now if you are a rogue running up to unlock the doors um you do want to go to zalgaz or drushk first as Nexona, number one, is one of the most painful dragons in the zone. But number two, um, those are where people are going to be racing first. A lot of people leave Nexona behind because, like I said, they just don't want to deal with Nexona. There are resists you can get rid of uh, on these dragons. or So it is most likely that you're going to go for these. Now, say you've been up here and you've been waiting to uh, to open the doors and it's going to be a minute before they're going to be coming up. If you are a gnome, um, I will sh actually let me let me show you Zygos first, because if you're a gnome, you'll want to use these pillars out here to re uh, re sew, re levitate uh, those kind of things. But here I have an issue with my levitation, so we'll come up here first. But if it isn't something where you can use those pillars, like you want to put um, Dark Elf Illusion on, you want to come over to Z uh, Zygaz's room, and there is a little ledge here. It's Actually, it's more than little, uh, where you can put your nose against this wall, and you can levitate, you can sew yourself, you can... Um, give yourself Dark Elf Illusion, and then you'll be safe. So here is the trick for me. Um, whenever it comes to this, I will drop like a rock. So I do the click off trick. So as my character is going down, I click off and I click back on. I click off and click back on and so on and so forth until I feel like I'm tall enough, but I am, of course, <laughs> looking straight down, so that's not even working for me. Let's go ahead and try that again um, and see if we can't actually make it work correctly this time. So waiting for my character to drop down and then come up and then click back on the screen, drop down and then up, and you should see me start to lift. Oh, I did that one wrong. There we go. Going down, and then up. That might be enough. Let's go ahead and try, and it is. So now that I'm across uh, bards, you'll want to make sure that you click this, and then this door is what you're going to be going for. Most of your bards, though, don't have this issue. Now, this door is locked. The thing you want to know about this door is if the worm is behind it, you do not want to open this door because you will end up handing the the uh the the uh lock to the worm the worm will then see you so what you want to do is you want to come and you want to click like down at the bottom here and uh then that way you're not handing it to the worm which is pathing down now and um and that will save your life so there are i believe four three three uh drakes in here uh you're going to have drushk or i'm sorry Z zygos um pointing this way towards this this drake so you are able to come up into the room far enough that you could throw a javelin uh to pull it you kind of want to be here but as soon as you throw that the drakes are going to see you unless you're still in sneak mode which uh drakes i do not believe i i may be incorrect about this will um will not follow or maybe it's the other way around if you hit a drake uh, Drushk will not follow. So either way, um, that's more testing that you'll want to probably uh, take on yourself. 
And we are going to continue moving on now. But yes, anytime you have an issue with uh, your invis or your, well, not your invis, you are a rogue, uh, with like this, levitate just wore off. I can go right back over here real quick. Let me drop down, throw a levitate back on. I should be perfectly fine here. Nothing past in this area. Let's get hide sneak back on. And then we're on the move again. But if you are a gnome specifically, um, or if you are a bard specifically in a halfling mask, you can use the pillars out here uh, because you have a tiny enough body to do so. And you can uh, re-levitate and, and all that uh, behind these pillars. There, there's like a micro ledge uh, that is visible and will work for you as a gnome. Uh, I'm not going to take gnome off uh, for myself or take my current illusion off for myself because it's just easier to move around here uh, as a dark elf. So let us go ahead and go into Drusk's lair. This door is locked. I believe the bottom door is locked as well, but there is a trick with, I believe, wands or eyes that will allow you to pull Drush through the door so you do not actually need to have that door open. If you did need to have this door opened uh, by a rogue, uh, that could get the rogue killed. Um, so if you have the ability to just click on, um, on uh, Drush uh, through the door and target them then uh, that would be the better way that way the rogue can be at the top and they can be your exit as soon as they uh, the ro um, the bards path you pa path you pass you you're able to then um, move uh, over the ledge as a rogue and drop down and be ready with the uh, the fighting force so this is Drush Room. By the way, all of these blue pads, except for the one at the entrance, are clickable and will take you to different zones. Again, that should be in the information that I have over on the right-hand side as we come in and leave a, um, a Dragon's Lair. Now we're going to go to Nexilna, which is the bane of most people's existence, but if you are a necromancer and some other classes, um, I believe it dropped for me the uh, the sprinkler the other day for my cleric, so I'm not very mad about that. I don't know why I used my, my keys for that. There are no doors that are locked here. You are able to completely walk in without any problems. This one also has one of those bridges, but it is very small. Uh, so you shouldn't have to use too much of a levitate trick to get across it. Uh, I believe I'm pretty pretty easy to, to get across this one, but I'm going to at least do one. So as we go down, click off, click back on, and then we're going to try to make it across. So yeah, and we made it. Let's click this bridge here. And then we're going to come up over here and keep going down. And then come into Nexona's lair, where uh, she will be spawned here and looking. <laughs> I, can I not? Can I? Can I not get over the lip on this one? Oh, I have to go up the back. Uh, she will be looking, I believe, towards this direction. Not that it matters. Again, um, you can. You should be able to as a bard. Come all the way up to here behind this this um this drake and throw a javelin and move on out. Uh, I know there are other tricks. I don't know those tricks because I don't bard most of the times in VP. And now we are on to the mother of all, the leader of all the dragons, Fardar, the most glorious looking dragon in this uh, whole zone. And of course, I'm having problems with just moving around because of my levitate. But, oh, <laughs> I was like, 
Why am I seeing lava? Uh, that wasn't lava. It was just the bridge. All right. So, yeah, Fardar is the dragon where most of the drops are viable and wantable. There are some that are not, but there are mostly um, items that people are looking for, like the uh, Robe of Azure Sky, the Crown of Ryle, um, the Yenub's Earring, and, and so on. All of these items are, are really good uh, for a cleric or a shaman or anyone who can use that earring. It can be considered a best-in-slot item. I don't know another earring specifically that could replace it. Uh, I have it paired with Garzakor's earring, or I will have it paired with Garzakor's earring once I get my blacksmithing a little bit higher. So we'll come back into here, and uh, by the way, it is not something that they've added into this version of EverQuest, but in a newer version of EverQuest, you can go that way, and there is a door that leads to, um, I believe, another dragon, but that is not part of this version of the game, if you were just wondering about it. Maybe it's not that door, maybe it's as you come up into this area, if you keep going straight instead of coming into the pillar room. So I believe this door is locked. It is not locked. <laughs> I am wrong. I do not know my, my VP very well, apparently. So, uh, yeah, this one is pretty straightforward. Again, as a bard, you're going to just sneak across here. Uh, because most of the time, those, those uh, worms are going to be that way. You're going to probably follow this wall. Maybe sneak or cut in over here uh, as you have another worm that most likely is going to be there. It doesn't move too often or it doesn't feel like it moves very often. And then come cut back over to here, um, around here. And uh, yeah, so this door is also not locked. But the final door, I believe, is this is uh, the three Drake room to Fardar. Again, I don't know uh, where people go to do the things that they do here. And this is a locked door here. Um, so you, this is another one of those dragons where you want to uh, eye through it so that you can pull it just because of the fact that it is a pain uh, to do so. And I believe if I'm at the correct pad, we are now going to be going into Freeport. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions about this or any other zone, please let me know and I will talk to you later. This is Cypher Deck. Peace out.